2016, President Trump campaigned on many things. He made all kinds of promises, and I'm going to change this, I'm going to change that, and one of them was Christmas. I am a good Christian, he said, and I'm going to bring back Merry Christmas. That verbiage should be used by all. Merry Christmas. Hey, hey, ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas to you. But you know what? He keeps his word, and it's kind of spreading everybody in stores. People are saying it. Merry Christmas. I was in a store yesterday. Merry Christmas. Kind of nice to be... Uh, Having that happen again. In Canada, that's another story. You got the prime mistake there that he is such a mess. He's a walking disaster. Let me tell you, he now was appointed a minister. There's a lot of ministers in his government, and he's added some more to it. And this minister's title is the Minister of Middle Class Prosperity. What the heck is that? You know, why are you putting this in classes, firstly? I dislike that. I dislike first class, middle class, second class, low class. I mean, come on. I mean, have you no class? You shouldn't talk like that. And here's a guy that now, it's the old story again. It's kind of like it used to be with progressive conservative, those people that think they're on the right. Two names, progressive means left, conservative means right. I mean, that's like saying virgin hooker. I mean, come on. And that's what he's doing here. Minister of middle class prosperity. You're middle class, you're rich. I mean, I don't no, his job, is, of course, is to drive everybody down to low class, financially speaking, at least, because he takes all of our money. Just another stupid thing. Okay, jobs uh, in Calgary and Edmonton, of all places in Alberta, they're getting pounded because of that same prime mistake. The guy that doesn't know what to name things, same guy that doesn't even know how to name a bathroom anymore. In any event, back to this, there's been like a lot of jobs recently, just in Calgary. Just the other day, 1,000 jobs lost in one day. Apparently, there's upwards to 200,000 jobs that have been lost, and what are you going to do about that? I don't like interference from government ever, but you know, the free enterprise system, sometimes it needs a little nudge. I don't like uh, legislation. I like education. Maybe do like Oregon, you Alberta government people. I go to the oil companies and say, hey, for the next two or three years, let's get rid of self-serve gas stations. I mean, how many gas stations are there in the province? Many. And, and like Oregon, you can't self-serve. We have to hire people. So I know you're getting beat up already, but we're going to help. When I'm talking about beat up already, I mean the oil companies. We're going to make it better. So in the meantime, work with us to make our province better, create a whole bunch of jobs because the feds, they're against us. They don't like us. We're white. We're Christian. We're all those things they don't like. And we have oil. They don't like that either. Canadian police, jumping. Keep up with me. Still Christmas too, son of a guy. Canadian police, you know, they do not track violent criminals. <laughs> There's 300,000 bad guys in Canada that are prohibited from possessing a gun. They don't track them. They don't know where they are. And these are pre-offenders, probably. That's their job. That's their business. Instead, the government does track all the good guys. The good guys with a gun license, they're the ones that they're always mad at. They're the ones that they use gun control of. They don't do criminal control. Think about this. Daily background checks are done all of the time to the legal guy that has a gun. And he's constantly, again, under attack. The government just hates us, us, because I am one of them. I mean, it's pretty misplaced, the focus, right? And, and wow, how come you're doing that? What about those 300,000 bad guys? And that's their number. Probably is a lot more than 300,000. They should be tracking them. These are guys also that have been through the system. So you know that they exist. They're prohibited by law. And you don't know where they are. Canadian banks, you know what? They are huge pushers of the gay lifestyle. I don't get it. I mean, it's only 1% of the population of the country. I'm talking in Canada, of course, Canadian banks, duh. But, but you have pictures everywhere. You run ads everywhere. <laughs> this particular ad was taken out of the National Post. It's a national magazine, or a newspaper, rather. Why are you doing that? I mean, you're decorating the TD Bank, the Bank of Montreal, when you're standing in line, uh, their TV screens are all about you know, men hugging men and women hugging women. And Why? I, I, I mean, acceptance? We already have that. There are, it's already legal, but you shouldn't even have men and women up there hugging and kissing each other. Why? I mean, I'm going there to bank. What is this, a sex parade or something? Or a foreplay to what? <laughs> I mean, it's not very nice. And I gotta go on and on, but that will be another day. I'll save some of that. You can give me your comments and I'll put together a show to talk about the banks. I mean, you're a bank? Bank. You're a baker? Bake. Hey, see ya.